I started painting when I was very young, at age five. I did my first oil painting at age eight. I love how paint feels. It's a really fabulous experience to me to have the feeling of dragging paint across a surface with whatever tool I'm using to drag it with. I think paint is a really sensuous thing. In fact, I think it was so sensuous that when I was very young and in kindergarten, I painted my entire body with Kelly Green temper paint one day in school. I started with my fingernails and each fingernail felt so fabulous that I advanced to my hand, then I went to my arms, and then I went to my legs before the teacher figured out what I was doing and unceremoniously packed me off home to clean up. But see, I was even an abstract expressionist then. No, it's true. My what? paintings were not like the other kids. They were not neat and orderly. They were messy, big, and drippy. No, I love a good mental challenge, and the act of creating each piece of art is an extreme mental challenge. You start with a blank piece of canvas board or paper, and you wind up with something beautiful at the end. Um, and another thing is, it, it's, to create a really fabulous piece of art is a really scary experience, and I love to be scared. It's invigorating. The abstracts are all landscape-based. The New Mexico landscape here is extremely inspiring. It's a huge expanse of landscape with a lot of changing weather, dramatic weather, um, very dynamic, and I try to express that feeling in the landscapes. The landscapes are basically huge swaths of color, movement, and line. I'm not tied to an easel. I like to work the paintings on the floor, which some people would find uncomfortable, but that enables me to keep turning the, the paper or the canvas or the board around. I can walk around the painting, and it helps keep things fresh and dynamic. Well, I do the landscapes both on paper and on a rigid support. Um, I start by introducing line and color, and I let those two elements take me where the painting wants to go. Right now I'm using mostly acrylic paint because I can work faster. Acrylic paint dries quickly, so I can add multiple layers, uh, a lot of multiple layers in one session of painting. I use a variety of instruments to complete the painting. I use brushes, I use scrapers, I use uh, steel pads, all kinds of things to kind of give an interest to the texture uh, and add to the qualities of the painting. And I feel that using the acrylic paint helps that process. I don't have to wait long periods of time for oil paint to dry over multiple weeks in one painting. I want these uh, paintings to speak to each individual viewer's experience and give them a jumping off point for them to add their own interpretation. The figures came about sort of by accident. Um, in the beginning I was painting exclusively abstracts because I was really drawn to the 40s and 50s abstract expressionists. Then one day I was playing around in the studio and there were some construction materials left by my spouse in the studio. I thought I would try to work with them. And I had a paper piece that I was reworking. So I used some of these construction materials, which was mostly textural uh, type stuff, materials. And I put a lot of that on the paper. I added layers of paint to that. And then I found some sheetrock screws and nails around that I used to draw a seated abstract figure, which came out fairly compelling. From there, the figure series emerged by a process of um, experimentation over a period of time. I was very influenced by a show that I saw in 2002 of Nathan Oliveira's paintings at the San Jose Art Museum in California. 
and it, I was very struck by the power of one, the single figure that he does. So I started, I started with that, and then I went on to do groups of two and three figures on both paper and canvas. I start by randomly adding layers of acrylic paint to the paper or canvas. This goes on for several different layers. This is meant to be a quick little way of getting the first layer down. It's random. It's a random application of paint. Then the next step is to trowel on my texturing material. I'm just trying to um, get enough texture on here to be interesting, but not so much that it co covers up all the color. So the color has to be left open. After that, I add more layers of paint. So it's a complicated process. Again, it's just random. After I feel that there's enough layering of paint and, and uh, texturing material, I'll take um, a piece of graphite or charcoal and sort of lightly rough in a composition of abstract figures. I don't draw the entire figure, but just enough line to give me the roadmap of where to go. And then after I've done that, I start adding and subtracting paint with a paper towel and brush. With the paper towels, I use a lot of water. This helps sort of melt down the, the texturing material, which exposes the lower layers of the different paint colors and gives sort of a quality of the painting having been excavated, as though it were from an archaeological site. The figures have the quality of being in a relationship with each other, which the viewers seem to respond to. In fact, one, of, one piece was selected to be a book cover for a book that was about human relationships. It was published by the American Psychology Association. I think that many people are attracted to them because they can impute their own experience into them, and they can put their own interpretation on them.